My dear friends in Christ, as you are very much aware, our church connects the first reading with that of the gospel message. And the scenes today between Jeremiah and St. John's Gospel were probably written about seven centuries apart, but they are closely linked. Both Jeremiah and Jesus brought God too close for comfort. Jeremiah disturbed the status quo of his time, for he told the people that the covenant of the Lord was to protect them, but only if they were faithful to God. And if not, they were to blame, not God, for breaking the covenant. And our gospel story today gives us an insight in how the Jewish people at the time of Jesus viewed God. For they saw him as majestic, however, somewhat remote from them. And many people believe that if God is so distant, then we can live our lives the way we want to. But Jesus tells them that, yes, God is majestic. However, he is not remote. And the implication of this is that everything we do, both sacred and secular, has spiritual and eternal consequences. For our spiritual life cannot be separated or removed from the rest of our lives. One example might be, when someone tells us that they go to Mass each and every Sunday, and then every Monday they go to work and curse or gossip about their boss. Well, we certainly would wonder about their own spiritual life. Our spiritual life must be a reflection of how we live our lives each and every day. And the meaning of all of this is that God is inserted very deeply into how we live and hopefully all the good actions that we perform. So Jesus is making it quite clear in our gospel story. If you cannot accept my words of who I am, then accept the works that I do. For we know that one can certainly argue with words. However, works or deeds are beyond argument. Jesus is the perfect teacher and that he does not base his claims on what he says, but on what he does. The word of God is life-giving and power to those who believe in it. And Jesus shows us that the way to walk the path of truth and holiness is to follow his word and then put his word into action. Jesus himself anoints us with his power to live the gospel with joy. Yes, to live the gospel with joy. And when we accept his sacred word, as I mentioned, we take the words, we meditate on them, and then we put them into, our, into action, and especially in our secular, secular world today. Word, then action. As we listen to today's readings, I invite all of us to ask ourselves this very question. Am I a doer of God's word? Or am I a listener that does not put the message of the gospel into action? And this is only a question for us to ponder, something for us to think of during this Lenten time. My friends, as we approach Holy Week, we are asked by the church to reflect and to meditate on the sufferings of Christ. So today, I wish to share with you this poem. And this poem is about the Holy Crucifix. I bear it everywhere. I prefer it to all things. And I often read of beautiful things that carry my soul aloft on wings. But aught they say or air can sing, such peace to me as brings my crucifix. For it brightens my day and cheers my night. It makes life's heaviest burdens light. Nor beauties of nature nor charms of the sea can such depths of thoughts unfold to me as my crucifix. 
For it speaks in a low, mysterious way and says what creatures can never say. Ah, who will tell me the value of pain and the merit patient suffering can gain as my crucifix? When crushed beneath the weight of woe that only our crucified Lord can know, who can conform and comfort my aching soul and urge it onwards towards the goal as my crucifix? The trees and flowers all speak of God's love, and the sky reveals it from above. But neither flowers, clouds, nor sun can tell what his love for me has done as my crucifix. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise you, because by thou holy cross you have redeemed the world. We now present our prayers and our petitions to our loving Father. We begin by praying for peace in our hearts, in our homes, and in our world, especially in the Holy Land during these most sacred weeks. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those of you who are sick, those of you who are suffering, lonely, or in despair that Jesus, our Good Shepherd, may grant you peace and comfort. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have died, and especially during this past year, who will not be with us at our family Easter table, may they share in the resurrection of Christ. For the dead, we pray to the Lord. Lord And for our own personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, we thank you for hearing the prayers of your people, which we present to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our brother forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given, human hands is made, and shall become for us the bread of life. Blessed God By the mystery of the water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it shall become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed Lord God, we ask you to be pleased in the sacrifice that we offer you with a humble and a contrite heart. Wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Thank you, Joel. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God of mercy, may the gifts we present to your altar help us to achieve eternal salvation. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. The suffering and death of your Son brought life to the whole world, moving our hearts to praise your glory. For the power of the cross reveals your judgment on this world and the kingship of Christ crucified. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints and their unending hymn of joy. 